Hello, hi, this is Samir. Welcome. Today, this video is about five words that I will be teaching you, enriching your vocabulary. We will do it very slowly. These are very important words. If you are an IELTS aspirant, these words will be helpful to you. And if you are a daily communicator in which you're using English, obviously, as your language, so these words will definitely put a good impression on the listener. Okay, let's begin. The very first word that I'm going to cover today is enervate. E N E R V A T E. This is pronounced as enervate, right? Enervate. Now, enervate, what enervate means? It means lack of energy, right? When you're performing too much physical work or if you are you know, a child in school and you're studying, right, you get sometimes a lot of homework, okay? Because of that, you know, when you are being given too much of uh, homework to do, you don't do any physical exercise or something, you know, sometimes you get a lot of stress, right? So today I'm going to do some words related to stress only, okay? So that if you get a topic in IELTS, for example, anything related to working, right? Anything related to children, like the schools and all. So these words can be really helpful, okay? Lack of energy, you can also, you know this word fatigue, right? When you get overstressed out, exhausted mind, Okay, so enervate. Now let's make an example. I will be making an example related to IL space only. Okay, for example, excessive given homework to students, excessive given homework to students sometimes make them enervate, right? So excessive given homework to students sometimes make them enervate. That directly, you can say impact, or hamper, H-A-M-P-E-R, hamper, right? Um, excessive given homework to students sometimes make them in a way that directly impact their academic performance. Now, please, when you speak this word academic, I have heard many students saying academic, it's not academic, it's academic, okay? It's academic, academic, right? I hope this example is clear to you. So enervate, lack of energy, fatigue. So excessive given homework to students sometimes. Now do remember, I'm telling you, if you are an IELTS aspirant, these words are very important sometimes because not every student, first of all, is going to come across, you know, like a lot of pressure and all, right? There's only a few students. You can't just say to each and every child that they are getting that kind of stress, right? So we have to do some sort of hedging where we can, you know, convey our message positively to the listener and the reader that I'm not talking about all the students, it's just few of them. So excessive given homework to students sometimes make them in a way that directly impacts their academic performance, right? I hope this one's clear. Now let's do our second word. Second, equanimity. E Q A N I M I T Y, equanimity. Equanimity means like when, you know, this one is, um, Okay, so you're stressed out, right? You are frustrated, you're irritated, okay? And you need to calm down, 
right? So when we say that you, you need to have calm, you need to have some peace, right? That's what the word is economity. It means calmness. Right, equanimity. Now, let's make an example to clearly understand this word. Now, you know, uh, we are talking about too much of stress. To stress, I'll give you a very good word today here. It's tensity. T-E-N-S-I-T-Y, tensity. So example of equanimity, let's say the Tensity that white collar people, white collar people are the office workers, right? The tensity that white collar people often get due to prolonged working hour due to prolonged working hour impact now let's bring this word into impact on overall performance at work therefore one had better accept the good and bad with economy. Right. This one, I must say, is only used for your writing. Try not to speak in speaking, you know, avoid it. This is a grammatical structure, had better. I'm using just instead of must, right? So the tensity means stress. We have already done this now. The tensity that white color people often get due to prolonged working hour. Now prolonged means longer hours, right? So instead you can use prolonged. So prolonged working hour impact on overall performance at work. Therefore, one had better accept the good and bad with equanimity, right? This is like a sentence you can cram it if like you are giving, you know, this sentence has an explanation and your result, right? This is something you do in your task too, right? especially when the topic comes related to work, you know, like families are not having a lot of time to spend with their, uh, you know, children. So what can be done? So you can inculcate this sentence over there, like because they're working for longer hours. And thus longer hours can be changed to prolonged working hours, right? So I hope this one's clear too. Now, next move on to our third word. So number three. It's extraneous. Now, how to pronounce it is X. Extraneous, extraneous, right? T R E. It's not spelling as T R E. Over here, it's E X T R A N E O U S, which sounds like extraneous, extraneous, right? Now, what extraneous means? Extraneous means um, irrelevant. irrelevant or you know like when you are uh, sitting somewhere when you're talking but it's not logically you know like whatever you're speaking it's irrelevant right so that is what extraneous means like you know hey man what whatever you're speaking like seriously it's just extraneous right so whatever you whatever you just said it's quite extraneous Right. So, which means that whatever your friend or anyone is talking, he or she didn't speak in between the topic, but right? it's completely irrelevant. Now, let's make an example to understand. For example,
I find your response quite extraneous. Right. I find your response quite extraneous. So I find your response quite irrelevant. Right. I was being told when you're doing speaking, you know, it's beautiful. Well, you know, sometimes I was being told by Manny, now passive sentence, right? I was being told by Manny that I speak extraneous. However, I have changed. Right? I have changed by continuous practice, taking part in some group discussions and all. That way I have overcome my habit of speaking irrelevant. Now, why I'm using irrelevant here, not extraneous, because I don't want to repeat my words, right? So that my fluency can be maintained. Okay, I hope this one's clear. Let's move on next. All right, number four. Now, let's understand this word. Very beautiful word. Number four is fractious. F-R-A-C-T-I-O-U-S. Fractious. Now, what fractious means? Fractious means irritable person, especially children. You know, when they become grumpy, you can use this word too, grumpy, but irritable, grumpy, right? When children, you know, like uh, it is very important to teach them some good ethics. Otherwise, you may see behavioral change in them. They may become grumpy. They may start to irritate someone and they may become fractious right let's form a sentence example should children are not taught uh, are not taught Let's say we have to deal with them. So dealt. Should children are not dealt with calmness. Let's say so calmness. We did the word equanimity. Very good. Should children are not dealt with equanimity, they may become yes, fractious. Right? Should children are not dealt with economy? Now you can see how easily our words are coming. This one we already did in a previous class. I'm replacing with F. Okay. So once again, should children are not dealt with economy, they may become fractious, which means you're saying that if children, you know, they are not dealt with calmness, if they're not dealt with calmness, politeness, right? they may become fractious they may become grumpy okay all right i hope this one's clear fractious right the fractious behavior right of children you can also make an ex another example like uh, like for example it is the fractious behavior of some children at school which makes their teachers not imparting education effectively right for example let's see it is the fractious behavior of some children at school which makes their teachers not imparting education effectively right so this is how we can form sentences using our c2 based words right and they they sound absolutely good obviously because they're quite unique okay i hope this one's clear as well now let's move on to our last word for today, right? Very simple again. Number five, A-P-O-D-I-C-T-I-C, -I -I apodictic. Apodictic, apodictic, right? Apodictic, it means something that is 
undoubtedly true indisputable right something that is absolutely like crystal clear right so that's where we can use the word apodictic right let's form a sentence for example you know how we write in our ielts essays we give out our results right by putting hence therefore please do not write so because that's informal okay we have to use formal expressions only in task two right in my task two video i have told in the basic video if you can check out on my youtube channel so i have explained that why we should not be using the words like while giving examples and so because these are informal and task two has to be completely formal okay so therefore here it is quite apodictic that people then you can you know just carry on with your sentence right apodictic okay i hope these words are clear to you five words we have covered today right every sunday or every day after you know like the two three days i will definitely be preparing some more videos regarding words in order to enrich your vocabulary try to make some sentences based on them and bring those sentences in your conversation because i always say the more you speak the better you become all right thank you so much for joining me you have a lovely day ahead